done a video on PetSmart's chameleon care guide, so I will link that up above here and in the description box below if you're interested in checking that out. But today we're going over Petco's Veiled Chameleon Care Guide. This is specifically just for Veiled Chameleons. So sit back, relax, and watch me pick apart <laughs> their chameleon care guide. So I just have their care guide pulled up here. Um, so I'll, I'll leave a link down in the description if you guys kind of want to follow along. But just says Veiled Chameleon Care Guide, table of contents, which is great. Let's see, typical Veiled Chameleon appearance and behavior. Um, they can look in any direction, that's true. Their eyes can move independently, that's true. Very long tongues, I feel like that's pretty obvious. <laughs> Um, their toes are prehensile, meaning they can grasp branches for climbing. Yes, it also mentions their prehensile tail, which is a unique characteristic to chameleons because not all lizards have prehensile tails where you can like hang from your tail like a monkey. They are tree dwellers, reside on branches and plants exclusively. That's true. Um, they change color depending on temperature and mood. They also change color to camouflage themselves when hiding. Dun, dun, dun. Our first error in chameleon care. So the first part is true. They do change color. That's true. And it is depending on temperature and mood, for sure. It is never to camouflage, though. I mean, and they are inherently green lizards. So if you're in a green background, then yeah, I guess you could call that. But it's not with the intention of disguising themselves. Like, they don't change color to hide or to camouflage like Luna just happens to be a green lizard but if I put a purple background behind her she's not just gonna magically turn purple as a total myth so this is very misleading and I would say incorrect because they don't change colors to camouflage themselves and hide in fact when a chameleon is feeling threatened or scared they tend to get brighter to appear threatening to predators so that's not true males are generally larger and more vibrant and colorful than females true Male veiled commands also have tarsal spurs on their hind feet. This is like mostly true. And the golden rule is if there's a tarsal spur or a little bump on the back foot, then it's a male veiled chameleon. But more and more females are starting to have tarsal spurs. So you have to be careful. You can't go exclusively off of tarsal spurs. You would also need to go off of cask size, coloration, body size. All that will indicate whether or not it's male or female because males and females have very different coloration and pattern. And I did a whole video on how to tell the sex of a veiled chameleon. So you, you can watch that up here and I'll link it for you guys. They have a horn-like bump on top of their heads called a cask that helps direct dripping water into their mouths for drinking. So yes, they do have their cask. It's a distinguishing characteristic of a veiled chameleon. Males will have a bigger cask than the females. I've heard of this, of like helping it like drip water down. I, I honestly think that's a bunch of mumbo jumbo because a panther chameleon and other species of chameleons have no problem drinking. And it's not like they drink because of the water that's falling down. They drink off of the leaves that are around them. So I think that's also a X. Um, let's see, veiled chameleons become highly stressed when handled. Regular handing is not recommended. I would say this is mostly true. There's always exceptions, but I'm gonna agree with that. Now we moved on to chameleon characteristics, care difficulty, intermediate. I would agree with that. Average lifespan, five plus years with proper care. I would agree with that. Average adult size, 18 to 24 inches long, depending on species. I like how it says depending on species when we're only, like this is a veiled chameleon care guy, so that, that is a species, but besides the point. Diet, omnivorous, so I would actually argue that they are insectivores and should be fed exclusively live bugs, but we will get into that in the diet section. Minimum habitat size, at least two feet in each dimension for juveniles, so two feet by two feet, 24 by 24, and at least 36 feet, 36 feet, three feet, 36 inches in dimension for adults. So I would say that's too small, my recommendation is that you put your baby chameleon in the adult enclosure from the beginning. And an adult enclosure should be two feet by four feet tall. Chameleons are, as it says, tree dwellers and they're arboreal and they're climbers. So they need that tall 
linear space more so than they need sideways space. And there are zero issues with a baby chameleon being in a full size enclosure. A lot of people have the misconception that baby chameleons won't be able to find their food. But keep in mind, like when they're in the jungles, like they have no issue finding food. It's not like there's a little cup waiting for them. Like a healthy chameleon should have zero issue thriving in a properly set up full size enclosure. So there you have it. Now we're on to habitat size. Veils will reach adult size in nine to 12 months under ideal conditions. Upgrade your habitat size as your reptile grows. So I'm, yeah, I'm gonna disagree with this. And one more point besides what I just said is that chameleons don't do well with change. They don't do well being constantly put in new environments because that's gonna be new stressors and it's going to require an adjustment period, typically around two weeks before your chameleon will settle into a new home. So if you're constantly upgrading them, then your chameleon's like, <gasps> New place, okay, I'm fine. <gasps> New place, okay, I'm fine. Like, that's stressful for your chameleon. Not to mention, not cost effective at all. And keep in mind, this is coming from Petco, a place that sells supplies. So take that with a grain of salt. It's much easier to just get what you need to be their forever home in the first place and just stick with that, be good to go. Okay, building your habitat. Chameleons are arboreal, tree climbing. I just said that. So they need a or they need vertical oriented habitats up and down and different levels of climbing to regulate their body temperature. That is a beautiful sentence and I'm pretty sure I said all that already. <laughs> so that's great. Substrate. So substrate is what goes in the bottom of the enclosure. And this says generally substrate is not recommended as it can get moldy from dripping water. True. Chameleons are also known for eating bedding that is in particles or chunks and developing gastrointestinal tract obstructions. That's a mouthful. As a result, basically getting impacted or not able to pass it because they eat big chunks of bark or dirt or things like that. If bedding must be used, stick to reptile, carpeting, coconut fiber, or paper towels. So the reptile carpet is not recommended because of what it said. It can get moldy, develop bacteria, poop falls on there, dead bugs, bleh. So you don't wanna use that. Coconut fiber is just as risky as using any other substrate like bark or dirt, so don't use that. And then paper towels, totally fair. Paper towels would be great. You just have to constantly change them out. So what I recommend is just having potted live plants at the bottom. This is great for two reasons. One, your chameleon's not gonna eat them. And two, it'll help catch the water from your misters and drippers and like chameleons have a lot of water in their habitat. So those plants, because they're live, can absorb that water and it also helps with their humidity. So that's what I do. And if you do wanna use substrate, just make sure it's bioactive. And if you're not sure what that is, feel free to research. It's a pretty cool thing. Moving on, plants and decor. Create a dense area of non-toxic, real or plastic plants and vines but not silk, which won't absorb water, on one side for hiding. So I would not recommend plastic plants at all. Um, I would stick to real plants if you need suggestions on what plants to use, how to set them up, all that good stuff. I have tons of videos on plants for chameleons. If you do decide to use fake plants, I would recommend using the silk leaves because they would be easier for your chameleon to digest if they were to ingest them versus the hard plastic would be a bigger challenge. So they want dense plants on one side and then an exposed area of branches for basking on the other side. Life plants will help maintain habitat humidity, which is crucial to keeping chameleons hydrated. That's all true. When selecting branches, compare the width of the size of your chameleon's feet to be sure they can grab onto the branches and they should have some horizontal sections for your chameleon to perch on easily. So that's all, all true. A common mistake I see is or people will throw branches in there that are super thick and your chameleon's little tiny foot like can't grab onto it. So you want your chameleon's foot to be able to grab mostly around it. So make sure your branches are on the smaller side and they should be primarily horizontal because chameleons move side to side more than up and down so that's all great and then at the top you're going to want all your basking branches and then more vegetation and plants towards the bottom half temperature maintain a temperature gradient of 90 to 95 degrees fahrenheit on the warm side and 70 degrees fahrenheit on the cool side 
I'm going to suggest slightly different temperatures for a veiled chameleon. So for a female, I would suggest 80 degrees Fahrenheit basking temperature. Reason for that is because lower temperatures will mean that they will produce fewer eggs, which is less stress on the body. Higher temperatures, more eggs, more stress on the body. Now, if you have a male chameleon, you can, temperatures can go a little bit higher. I would stick around 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Veils, because they do have that tall cask, are prone to getting burns at the top of their head because chameleons don't register if they're burning. So to be on the safer side, 85 degrees Fahrenheit would be my recommendation. And then it can go as low as like into the 70s, high 60s at the bottom of the enclosure. Don't stress too much of the temperatures down below, but 70 is totally fine as well, what they're suggesting. Use an incandescent light or ceramic heater as primary heat source. Ideally, the habitat temperature should not fall below 70 degrees at night. So yes, you do want to use an incandescent heat bulb. Do not use red lights. They don't mention that. They probably should have because that's a common mistake. But yes, that's good. And then for a veiled chameleon, they can actually benefit from an even stronger, deeper, lower, lower <laughs> temperature drop. Um, into like 65 degrees Fahrenheit, even as low as 60 degrees. And this is actually very beneficial for the chameleon to have that chance to have those lower temperatures. Humidity, maintain less than 60% humidity. So for a veiled chameleon, you want to stay around like 30 to 40, 30 to 50 percent humidity. Obviously, there's going to be spikes, highs and lows throughout that as your mister goes off and whatnot. But that's what we want to aim for, 30 to 50, 30 to 40 percent, somewhere in there. And then at nighttime, you want to have a spike, so it's around 70 percent at night. They're saying mist plants as needed to provide water for your chameleon to drink, even if you have a dripper. So yeah, for hydration, did they talk about hydration? I guess more just humidity, but you could use a fogger at night, mister during the day, and then a dripper during the day as well. Lighting, okay, here we go. This is the juicy stuff. <clears throat> to ensure your reptile is making vitamin D in their skin so they can absorb calcium from their food, provide UVB with full, full spectrum lighting for 10 to 12 hours a day. That is accurate, 100% true, love that. Place a horizontal branch approximately six to eight inches below the UVB bulb so your chameleon can while for basking. That's a typo. I don't know what they're saying. But six to eight inches, that is a, a good distance. An incandescent day bulb can be used for the basking area during daylight hours only. So no lights on at night. And, oh, here we go. Use a ceramic heater or a nocturnal or red incandescent at all hours to help maintain temperature within recommended range. Big X for Petco. Red lights should never be used for a chameleon and no lights should be on at night. Ever. Period. If it gets way too cold below 60 degrees Fahrenheit, then you can use things like a ceramic heat emitter, but definitely don't be using red bulbs. That's like chameleon care 101. So that's don't do that. <laughs> um, UV bulbs should be changed every six months to ensure adequate ongoing UV exposure as the potency of the bulb wanes. So this is true. Definitely replace your bulbs on a regular basis. Just because the light turns on does not mean that it's producing enough UVB. What they totally neglect in here is to mention what kind of UVB bulb you should be using. So I will tell you, you should be using a T5 high output linear UVB bulb. I'm gonna recommend the Reptisun 5.0 or the Arcadia 6%. I have tons of videos on UVB and the differences between all the bulbs. The T5 is different than a T8, so make sure you're researching and buying the correct bulb for your chameleon. Okie dokie. Check. Make sure we're still filming. Yep, we're good. Cleaning your veiled chameleon's habitat. Thoroughly clean and disinfect the habitat at least once a week. Okay, um, you should not thoroughly clean and disinfect on a weekly basis. Uh, let's just keep going. Let's just read what this is. Place chameleon in additional secure habitat or carrier. I'll be honest, most people can't handle their chameleon to take them out in the first place, so that's going to be a struggle for a lot of keepers. Scrub the tank and furnishings with reptile habitat cleaner or 3% bleach solution. Okay, you could do that. That's going to be hard though when you have tons of live plants in there. 
Rinse thoroughly with water to remove all traces of reptile habitat cleaner or bleach smell. Eee, that's probably stinky. Dry tank and furnishings completely. Add clean substrate if you use substrate and decor abs back into habitat before returning the chameleon to the habitat. So this goes back to what I was saying before, and that chameleons don't do well with change. So if you're on a weekly basis taking everything out, scrubbing it, and then putting everything back in, that's going to be very stressful for your chameleon, not to mention you having to remove them from the enclosure and put them back in. So what I do and what I recommend is to spot clean, which means you just clean as needed. So if there are dead leaves, pick those out. Pieces of shed, take those out. Pieces of poop, clean those off. Scrub the bottom, sure, keep it clean and tidy, but there's no need to like disinfect with bleach and chemical solutions and clean everything out unless it's a brand new chameleon and it's a home you've used previously, or there was parasites or some health issue that could be passed on to your chameleon, then by all means, 100%, give that sucker a scrub top to bottom. But if this is just daily maintenance, like all my plants in there are like securely tied into the enclosure and like it's a web of plants. There's no way I could take those in and out. So I just clean as needed. It's called spot cleaning. So that's my recommendation. Feeding. Okay, here we go. I know. I know this is gonna. Hmm. Let's just start. What to feed your veiled chameleon? A well balanced veiled chameleon diet consists of a variety of insects. Love that. Including gut loaded crickets, recently fed with high calcium foods such as mustard greens, collard greens, squash, and commercially available cricket diets. So I would agree with all of that, except for the commercially available cricket diets. If you're using the like little gel cubes or the powdered cricket diet that you can get from like flukers, that's not very nutritional. What they're suggesting, the mustard greens, collard greens, squash, those are all excellent, excellent things to be gut loading with. So just skip the little hydration cubes because the greens will have enough water in there for your crickets to stay alive. They mentioned roaches. Those are great. I love doobie roaches. Mealworms are not recommended for chameleons because they're low nutritional value. They're just not very healthy for your chameleon and have high levels of chitin. If, the, if you feed them on occasion, not a big deal, but they should never be a part of their regular diet. There's much better options. Hornworms are a great treat. Calcium worms are also known as phoenix worms or black soldier fly larvae. Those are excellent, excellent feeders. And wax worms should be used as a treat. They don't mention things like silk worms or moths or flies, those would also be good options for your chameleon. And then they say you can feed your chameleon dark leafy greens such as blah blah blah, then they go on to list a bunch of greens and then mention live plants. I have a whole video on should, your, should you feed your chameleon fruits and vegetables. So if you want to check that out, please do, but I'll just give you a high level overview. Just because a chameleon can eat fruits and vegetables does not mean that they should. And it's part of their, it's just to keep it simply, a chameleon should only be fed live insects. There's no benefit to feeding them leafy greens because if you're feeding the leafy greens to your bugs and then those bugs to your chameleon then you're good to go you're covered there's no need to feed those to your chameleon directly now if your chameleon's going to town on the life plants in your enclosure this is exactly why i recommend life plants because if they were trying to eat the fake plants that could end badly so that's totally normal behavior but there's no need to feed your chameleon salads and again check out that video if you want to go into more information as to why that is things to remember when feeding your veal chameleon Chameleons will not drink water from the bowl. That's true. They rely on moisture on plants for water. Mist plants four to five times daily for two minutes at a time so that the leaves are saturated and dripping with water. Or use an automatic mister or dripper to do the same thing. Misting systems also help maintain humidity. So all of that I agree with, except for the amount of times that they're suggesting. They're suggesting misting four to five times today, a day. My recommendation is two times a day once before lights turn on and once after lights turn off. If you're constantly keeping your enclosure moist with constantly misting, one, your humidity levels are gonna be way too high for a veiled chameleon. Two, your chameleon is, or your enclosure is not gonna have time to dry out. So then that's when you have risk of bacteria growing. Your branches will stay moist. So then your chameleon is at risk for developing sores on their feet. And then if you have a hot,
human environment, then your community is at the risk of developing an upper respiratory infection or a URI, which can be fatal for a chameleon. So by misting in the mornings and the evenings, they still have that humidity spike and opportunity to drink, but then their enclosure can dry out during the day, which is what you want. Cool, moist environments, hot, dry environments is what chameleons need. Do not offer insects that are larger than the width of your chameleon's head. 100% agree with that, that's great. Juveniles should be fed once to twice a day, adults can be fed every other day. Yep, this is great. I'm gonna take it a step further and say that juveniles should only be fed once in the morning and then adults should be fed three to four bugs every two to three days. Chameleon obesity is a very real thing, so just make sure you're not overfeeding your chameleon and I have videos all about that, so check them out. Alternate sprinkling food with a calcium supplement that contains vitamin D and one that does not plus sprinkle food with a multivitamin supplement once a week. So they don't really specify how often you should use each of them, they just say alternate. So I'm gonna give you a very clear cut supplement schedule for a veiled chameleon. You want to use calcium without vitamin D3 every single time you feed your chameleon on every single bug, okay? Then twice a month, you're gonna use a multivitamin. If your multivitamin has D3 in it, that's all you need. Two times a month, you're good to go. If your multivitamin does not have vitamin D3 in it, then you also need to use calcium with vitamin D3 two times a month. Rewatch that as many times as you need to until it sticks and makes sense, but you have to be on a strict supplement schedule. You can't just willy-nilly throw whatever you want or forget some days. Proper supplementation will make or break your chameleon's health. Um, let's see. Vegetables not eaten within 12 hours should be discarded. We're not supposed, we're not gonna be feeding our chameleons vegetables anyway, so we're just gonna skip that. Veiled chameleon care. Chameleons regularly shed their skin. True, they do that throughout their whole life. It does take longer as they get older and it's less often as they get older, so don't freak out if that happens. Ensure the habitat humidity is at an appropriate level to keep your chameleon hydrated to allow proper shedding. That's true. To facilitate shedding, be sure to mist your chameleon, avoiding their face and the plants in the habitat several times a day. No, don't do this. One, we don't want to mist too often for reasons we've discussed, but also chameleons are dry shedders, which means if we miss them extra, that's doing the opposite of helping them shed. It's going to make it that much harder because they need it to be dry. It's like us as humans, if we get sunburned and our skin's starting to peel and then we take a shower, that dry skin's just going to stick right to us, right? It's not gonna come off as easily as if we were dry and then it just peeled off on its own. Same thing with chameleons. Um, let's see, then they just have chameleon supplies, habitat mates for veiled chameleons, house adult veiled chameleons separately as they are aggressive when housed together, true. Do not house different reptile species together, true. If juveniles are housed together, they must be the same size. Significant size discrepancies can cause additional stress and potential aggression. If you're watching this video and you're a future chameleon keeper or you already have two chameleons, separate them. There's no benefit to putting juveniles together. You may see it in the store, but just because they do it does not mean it's recommended for chameleons. So chameleons should be kept separately and they should have a visual barrier so they can't even see each other. So you guys can see I have three enclosures, but they cannot see each other and that's how it should be. Signs of a healthy veiled chameleon. Active and alert, clear eyes, body and tail are filled out, ribs are not visible, I would disagree with that. A healthy weight chameleon, you can actually see the ribs. Now if you can see their tailbone, that would be underweight. But being able to see the ribs is very normal. Healthy skin, no scabs or crustiness. True, just keep in mind if a chameleon has like stuck shed on there as they get older or they're shedding in pieces, that's also normal. Clear nose and vent. Yes, eats and passes stool regularly. All good. Red flags. If you notice any of these signs, contact your veterinarian. Weight loss or decreased appetite. Agree, it's typically with a parasite. Inability to hold ab ab abdomen <laughs> off ground. Hunch posture. Agree, mucus in mouth or nose. Also bad, swelling around eyes. Bad tongue hanging out of mouth, that's very obviously bad. Um, curvature or bowing of legs or spine, that's typically the result of metabolic bone disease. 
lethargy. Keep in mind, I'm like, yes, if your canine's lethargic, that would be bad. But they're not very active animals. Like, they kind of just sit there and do nothing most days. So just keep that in mind that that's normal chameleon behavior. Now, if it's more so than that, then that would be cause for concern. But, like, if it's just one day they're not really moving, don't freak out. Now, if it's a pattern and combined with other things, then I would start to worry. Paralysis of limbs. Oh, geez. Or decreased ability to grasp with toes. Definitely bad. Abnormal feces. Not great. Non-rotating eyes. Also not great. Then it lists off some common veil command health issues. Gastrointestinal disease. <laughs> Gastrointestinal disease. Symptoms or causes. Runny stool. I guess this is just like bad poop, basically. It says consult your veterinarian. I would agree with that. Metabolic bone disease. Now this is a very, very, very common and preventable health issue with chameleons. It says inability to absorb calcium due to insufficient UVB light or improper dietary calcium vitamin D supplementation. If untreated, can lead to a disorder characterized by deformities, softened bones, fractures, swollen limbs, lethargy, decreased appetite, weight loss, and death. All true, all preventable with correct UVB supplementation. Respiratory disease, so symptoms include labored breathing, decreased appetite, lethargy, music, mucus in nose and mouth, bubbles from the eyes, nose, or mouth, can be caused by habitat maintained at inappropriate temperature in an adequate humidity level. That's also true, which I find interesting because they're telling you to miss four or five times a day, but then admitting that if you have improper humidity and heat, you will get a respiratory infection, so... Anyways, low dietary vitamin A levels, so um, it says swollen, swollen, swelling <laughs> around both eyes. So vitamin A is linked to eye health, so if you're not using a multivitamin that has vitamin A in it, or not using um, vegetables that have vitamin A to gut load your bugs with, then your command can develop eye issues. Eye issues will also be connected to supplementation and UVB. Egg-bound female. Ah, this is the first time we're talking about eggs. Sitting on the bottom of a habitat, unable to climb, open mouth breathing, refusal to eat, lethargy, sunken or closed eyes. I say to consult your veterinarian, ensure proper humidity and temperature, adequate calcium diet and substrate depth that allows for digging to lay eggs. That is the only time in this entire care sheet that they mention chameleons laying eggs, females particularly. So I just want to touch on this for anyone watching this because this could potentially save a chameleon life. If you didn't know, veiled chameleons, females, will lay eggs even if they've never been with a male before. Very similar to how chickens lay infertile eggs, females will lay infertile eggs, which means we have to provide somewhere for them to lay them. Otherwise, they will get egg bound, which is fatal. And they just hold on to those eggs and then don't have anywhere to lay them. So I made an entire video on chameleon egg laying, how to set up a laying bin, the signs they're going to lay, what to do if they're during their laying, after their laying, all that good stuff. So I will link that up above here and in the description box below for you guys. But please, please, please make sure you double, triple check if your chameleon is male or female, and if it is female, that you have a lane bin set up for her. So there you have it. That is Petco's Veil Chameleon Care Guide. Broken down, <laughs> yay or nay, on what's good, what's not good. Overall, like, I was, that was much better than PetSmart, so I'll leave it at that. But I hope you guys found this helpful. I have over 100 chameleon care videos on TikTok, Instagram, and here on YouTube. So feel free to check those out if you're wanting to learn more about chameleon habitats, food, supplementation, UVB, lighting, handling, all that good stuff. I have tons of content out there. So feel free to check that out all under Neptune the Chameleon. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Leave any questions or comments down below. Feel free to subscribe so you know when I post a new video. You can follow Neptune and all my chameleons on social media at Neptune the Chameleon. And I have a bunch of different discount codes down below, Amazon product stores, background discounts, bug discounts. You can support me through Patreon. All of that will be linked in the description box below. Thank you in advance if you decide to support me. And otherwise, have a great day. Bye. Checking to see if we're still recording. <sighs> yes, okay, continue. 
we're still going. How much more is there of this? <laughs>